Good morning and welcome back to the video. It's the first time on the Vietnam gravel bike since Vietnam, so I thought I'd take the gravel track over to the studio. It's been three days since the 500k ride. Legs have felt better. As I said, heading over to the studio now. I think Lawrence is there, and I think there's been a couple of deliveries. Bike packing gear. The state of it. Well, it's seen better days, isn't it? Yeah, it's seen better days. So you've just kept it with Vietnam on it? Yeah. For now. It smells of Vietnam. It looks like Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd put all the stuff back on it, see what's fallen apart and what hasn't. I can't believe you rode all of Vietnam with a, a tubeless fat tyre and a road tyre on the back. <laughs> well, I want to split this video into two parts. First part, something I've always wanted to do. It's mail time. Mail time? Guys, so some of you sent me some stuff. First one comes from the US. <laughs> what the? Ginger candy. Hey Francis, hope you folks enjoy these gummy treats. Admittedly, the ginger chews are not particularly sweet. Great for soothing sore throat. If you boys are ever back in the USA, check out the Great Divide Mountain Bike Route. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, Kevin. I might have to get Chris to help me with some of these. Johnson Red Bull. Oh yeah. The productivity of this studio is about to go skyrocket for a very short amount of time. Or a very long amount of time, based on how many we've been given. It's a lot of sugar so far. I know what this one is. And it's relevant, part two of today's video, which is checking out how much of a mess my bike is after Vietnam. A bit of a care package from uh, Skin Grows Back. Some of you guys might remember us meeting Jamie out in Australia on the day after we finished the ride across the country. He gave us some bikepacking gear for the trip and has since become a supporter of the channel. So thank you very much, Jamie. This is a Pack 30. It's a sports backpack. I'm guessing Pack 30 means 30 liters, a wedge style frame bag. Because my bike frame is very small and it's compact geometry, this is gonna fit my bike a lot better than the one that's currently on there. It should fit a bit more snug into the angle of the head tube. It means I can run proper sized bottles. A matching lunchbox. Now I don't have to steal Daisy's one, which is what I've been doing for the last few months. Is that like top tube thing? Yeah. Top tube thing. Top tube thing. It's a drone carrying pouch. I had very off brand versions of these for Vietnam. Most people would use this for snacks. I use it for carrying a drone because a Mavic Air fits perfectly in there. Smaller lunchbox for when you don't need to carry as much stuff. Last but definitely not least, a lot of you guys ask me what camera strap that I use. The one I use is not made anymore, but skin grows back, do make one. Works in a similar fashion. It's like a normal sling with a bit that attaches and then secures it to your back so it doesn't wobble around. I'm gonna do a proper review of this with the guys from Giro and show you how to put it on properly. You want a sweet? What do you want? So how did my bike and all of the equipment that we took to Vietnam perform? Here's a quick rundown of nearly everything. Tail fin rack. This is possibly the single best bit of equipment that we had in Vietnam. It's essentially a seat pack but supported with a carbon rack. So it doesn't wobble around. You can lash pretty much anything you want to it. We were riding around with bags of inner tubes and extra tires, bottles of whiskey if you're James. You only need to go back and watch a couple of episodes to see how many things are actually attached to the back of James's. The rack has got an absurd weight limit that you'll probably never get close to. James was running a seat post extender on it, which made it a lot easier for him to get his stuff out of it when it was still attached to the bike. He barely took it off at all. So for the next trip, I would definitely take one of those. There were some signs of wear after the trip. Uh, I'd actually ridden it across Australia before. So taking that into account, I thought it did really well. A couple of the sticky pads wore off because uh, of the heat and some of the little rubber stops on the ends of the arms, uh, one of them pinged off, but it was quite easy to replace. All in all, it was just so useful being able to put as much weight on the back of the bike as you wanted. And along with that, much more space than any seat pack would offer. Next up was the Skin Grows Back bags. Uh, so it's frame bag, and bar bag. The frame bag, as I said before, uh, didn't quite fit properly. That was my fault for measuring it wrong and telling Jamie, but they still performed really well for the whole trip. I don't think they're rated as fully waterproof, but we rode through some pretty torrential rain and everything inside stayed dry. After a month of riding through some pretty aggressive single track and jungle and the front bag getting sprayed by the front tire, there's actually barely any signs of wear on that as well. So impressive. If you watch the series, you'll know that I had a puncher on the first ride day, which was Pretty annoying. It blew out my rear tire, um, destroyed the tubeless, and I had to go and replace it with a road tire, a Continental Ultra Sport. Continental Ultra Sport is like the tire that comes with entry level bikes. It performed surprisingly well through the whole rest of the trip. I guess the important bit is having the grip on your front tire. James was running thick slicks, and he was saying uh, grip was a bit of a problem. So if you are going to do a ride through Vietnam, because the roads are so shoddy, and you'll inevitably end up doing some single track, uh, ride some knobblies. It's worth it. About two weeks into the trip, uh, James exploded the only chain lube we had. So we went to a Vietnamese man in a shop by the side of the road who proceeded to cover my chain in thick engine oil. Weirdly enough, it actually worked quite well and I didn't have to lubricate my chain again, but it now looks like this. Um, 
I think I'm gonna have to give it a proper parts wash. GRX was fantastic. It was nice not to have any chain slap when you've got the clutch on and I didn't have to charge my DI2 at all through the whole month. The Villier Yena frame set was fantastic. Out of the three bikes we had there, I think mine was the best suited to the terrain we were covering because it is a full expedition bike. It's got mounts on the forks so I could run my bottles on the forks. Just a few more options in terms of carrying stuff. It was also comfortable and the geometry wasn't too aggressive so I was comfortable the whole time. It was also handy having the clearance for tires although I didn't use it. Um, perhaps next time I might go even wider because your average speed isn't actually affected that much when you're carrying all those bags on your bikes anyway. So perhaps 45s next time. These were the shoes that I was riding. Uh, these are the Shimano S Fires. Fantastic high-end carbon mountain bike shoe um, I was actually running my cleats as far back as they'll go as a bit of an experiment for this trip and I really really like this position generally the further you go back on the shoe the more stable your foot is I have a recurring IT band problem uh, and it didn't flare up whatsoever on this trip the mountain bike version of the shoe allow you to get the cleat further back than the road version so I'm not quite sure how I can replicate this on my road shoe without drilling some new holes spin on these wheels performed fantastic as usual the only problem that I had with them was uh, completely my fault and the reason I had to end up switching to a road tire which was that I didn't bring any valve extenders and I brought the wrong length tubes as well idiot just bring valve extenders the tube kind if it's just a tube you can put it on a valve with a non-removable core I mean, I love noodles, but sometimes having a few end of it gels and bars as well was a godsend. There isn't that much density in some of the Vietnamese food, and sometimes you just need an energy bar to fill yourself up. This power bank was one of the most useful things we had. Each one of us had one of these, and we all used them every day to charge our stuff. This one is made by Anchor. They do a few different versions varying in capacity. This version is actually quite expensive, but I think it's worth it. You get about 10 phone charges out of it, so decent. Wahoo Element Bolt. I think we were all running Wahoo devices during the Vietnam trip. They all worked really well. Could have done with slightly better battery though. I managed to lose my one and only USB cable so I couldn't charge this on the fly. So that's why a few of the rides are just on Lawrence and James's commute. The standard element has a longer battery life. So perhaps if you're doing bike packing and the extra size and weight doesn't matter, then choose that over this. After the initial fail, which was the day one puncher, my front tubeless actually lasted the whole trip. No punches, no maintenance whatsoever. That was a Continental Terra Speed tire uh, with stand sealant. Now, before the next big bike packing trip, I'm gonna get that bike properly stripped down and uh, rebuilt by Brown from Brown's Bike. So we'll find out if there is any underlying issues. But on the whole, the equipment performed really well. I'm gonna make very few changes, probably just a frame bag, the extension to the tail fin, as I mentioned, and maybe tire choice as well. I don't wanna go full touring tire, something like a Schwab Marathon, because it does affect your handling. Descents and cornering just aren't fun, and the bike just feels sluggish. Having to fix a few punches along the way isn't the end of the world, so there's definitely a mid-ground somewhere there. I'm up for doing a bit of experimenting. Now, I think I've covered most things, but if you guys have any other questions about bikepacking, bikepacking setup, any other equipment that we took to Vietnam, and if you're interested in how it performed, put it in the comments below. Equally, if you wanna send us some gummy snakes, we're in bicycle enrichment. <laughs> Got cookie crumbs all over you? No, I haven't. Um, it's actually a croissant crumb. It's New Year's Eve. Let's go to a party. Not made it home just before dark. Something cool has arrived for Daisy. She doesn't know yet. You've got another new bike. It's for me. Oh, holy mackerel. I've never had a new bike like this ever. This might give away what it is. Oh no, don't show them that then. This is a mere sneak peek. Do sneak they peek know over. where we're going yet? No. Ooh. Okay, yep. Ooh. It's all set up as well already. Yeah, I'm only giving them a sneak peek. Are you ready? What do you think? That's all right. You look very smart. You don't look smart. I don't look smart at all. Zero pie. Come along if you this want. This way. Let's go. <laughs>